This is the area that pretty much nobody has ever seen. Hey everyone, it's Dan here from JRPG Life. Elisa is out again today, but I wanted to share something kind of fun with you. So we've done collection tours, but there's one part of our collection that we really haven't shown anyone. So today we're going to do just that. Check this out. So what you see behind us is our collection like normal. Actually see the Xbox fridge there. The thing is fine. Those that don't know that haven't picked up the fridge yet, you can't leave it plugged in all the time. It's not an actual fridge. It's like a cooler. So, you know, I don't really recommend it, but it's neat to look at. Um, modem and stuff. But here is a shot. Well, there's Setzer doing his usual invading of everything. But here's our retro collection uh, setup. So in here, this is that TV I picked up at, uh, we picked it up at an estate sale for like 15 bucks. This thing is awesome. S-Video, HDMI, uh, composite, component, kind of everything we need for like retro all the way up to modern gaming. And it's our tester, right? But also we have our retro center. So since we have all of this in one room, this is where we keep our stuff that we play when friends are over or when we just want to sit down and play our retro RPGs. Because to be honest, they don't really look good on a big TV. So we like to keep them on something small. Um, so we have our Sega Saturn. This actually has a Japanese and US Switch for the mod. Uh, my original Dreamcast, I bought it way back when. The controller we used for it, this is actually, oh, it's not the one I thought it was. We have the Blue Millennium controller. That's another one we like to use with that one. Um, some of the common games we play when we're over here. Mario All-Stars is like a staple with our SNES Jr. One of my favorite multiplayer racing games, Stunt Racer, with our Grape N64. I like going multiplayer and just throwing cars around and stuff. It's pretty fun. The main controller choice for me is the Retrobit N64 controller. Sad sir, this isn't for you. Uh, right here we have our PS1 Mini. We actually use this in some of our shorts. This is our extra switch. Well, one of the extra switches and then a bunch of other whatever stuff. But the bottom shelf, this is the area that pretty much nobody's ever seen. So this over here is where like, let me explain what this area is. So this is where we keep a lot of stuff that is not going in our collection right now, but it might soon, or we're kind of keeping it for now because the market's not really good to sell it yet. Um, but honestly, I haven't looked back here in a long time. There are some things up front that we do use a lot, right? So like here are some protective sleeves for like uh, Game Boy, Super Famicom, some VHS, some Nintendo, some SNES, like boxed stuff. We like to keep that in here. We can get any time. And yeah, a couple strategy guides because this is one of my favorite Final Fantasies. I know. I know what you're going to say. Final Fantasy 13, you must not be a true RPG fan. To each their own. So anyways, we have, um, so the rest of this, let me give it a little context. We buy gaming lots, right? So when you buy gaming lots, a lot of times you have stuff that you already have, want to get, or need to resell. And some of this is stuff that we didn't have, or we had a duplicate of, so we need to resell it, but we don't want to resell it yet because it's not worth enough. So. For instance, we have, oh man, I forgot we had these. So we have the Digital Devil Saga games. These are complete. This one's actually sealed, interestingly enough. Um, we actually picked, so we have the first one of these in its collector edition. So when we found this in a lot, we're like, well, let's just keep it. Um, we're not graded game fans, and I don't think this one's really good enough to grade. I don't know. Comment below. What do you look for? quality seal. I don't know. Um, but we're keeping these as who knows what yet. We don't, we don't know what we're going to do with them, but we already have them. So duplicates. We have a, this is the center on Kagata for the uh, 3DS. We did find up, event, end up piecing it together. And then we had this as an extra. So now we have an extra soundtrack. I don't know what we're going to do with it. Cause they just re-released this one, by the way, for backstock. So you can buy this game again, brand new from, um, Marvelous. So check that out online if you haven't yet. Let's see what else is in here. Um, Action Replay DS. Okay. So that's in our collection, but these things don't really go anywhere really well. Because, I mean, you know, that doesn't look good on a shelf. Uh, more glass screen protectors. 
F0 GX. So I think this is just the game box and manual. Yeah. So there's no game in this, right? If there was a game in it, then I might be able to uh, put it on the shelf. But we are missing the game. So right now it's sitting as a lookout for it. I think same with this. This is the game and yep, the case and manual only for Simpsons Hit and Run. So some things that we just need to find the loose game of. But we're going to start moving a little quicker here. Medieval back art. Um, other, as I would say, Snickle Fritz, box and manual only for Dr. Mario, Game Boy. Um, this is kind of the boring stuff, right? We do have some demo discs in here. Dragon Quest VIII, Dual Hearts demo. We actually like a lot of these uh, JRPG demo discs, but we don't have a good place to display them. So for now, they're sitting in here. Thousand's Arms, uh, Tail Concerto demo. Shout out to Elisa's brother Leif. He actually uh, picked this one up for us for $1.95, I think, at one of his local shops. So that was awesome. Shenmue the movie. Oh, we have a duplicate of this uh, demo disc. I don't know what we're going to do with this yet because this already comes in the Black Label Edition Parasite Eve game for a PS1. Dot Hat Quarantine 4 demo disc sealed. So again, no idea what we're going to do with these. Here's some random, uh, looks like Pretty Presents Disc Gaia stuff. All right, so here's where all the juicy stuff is. Check this out. So this I know what it is because we recently got it. This is a second copy of Andre, Andro Dunos 2, uh, one of the last games they're releasing for the 3DS. We picked up two just for propriety's sake. Um, we're kind of just hoarding one for now. One's in our collection. Maybe we'll keep one sealed and then open the other one and play it. We're not exactly sure yet. Um, oh boy, yeah, I know what this is. This is funny. So we accidentally bought two of these. So this is the Shantae limited run thing. So what happens sometimes is while I'm at work and Elisa's at home, we want to buy these limited run games. And we don't know if the other one bought it in time. <clears throat> So we end up both tiny accidentally. So we have two of these. Uh, we have two different cards, so we'll probably keep you know the cards. I don't know. We don't really collect these kind of cards that often, but we have both these sealed still. Um, no reason to open it and play it yet, but we don't know what we're going to do with these. So we're hoarding them in here for now. Also in the back, okay, this is where stuff really gets good. So we have two more copies of Lumines for Vita sealed. It's crazy. So we already have this uh, and these are duplicates. Probably bought a big lot and now we have extras. We're sitting on Vita games. We have a lot of Vita games that we have extras of because a lot of times we'll just pick up the loose version and that's in our collection, right? Uh, then we find the complete version and we're like, well, what do we do with this loose one? Or we'll pick up a game complete that we know we're not going to play but we wanted it to complete our collection and then we find it sealed. We're like, well, let's upgrade our copy and put the sealed one on the shelf. That makes sense. Uh, let's see. Uh, to week it in, this is a loose Vita game. Yeah, it's just loose. So we are not selling any Vita games for a very long time. Oh, that's what that is. MLB The Show, ah, oh, this stupid game. So this is one of those download only games for Vita. And uh, yeah, that is the original art. We have this sealed already. So I don't know, this might be worth something, but not yet. It's a Vita thing, we're holding on to it. Again, more Vita games that are loose um, or complete that we have a duplicate of complete duplicate of. So these are not worth a lot right now, but we suspect the market's going to go up a lot with Vita. Um, we just picked this up the other day at Best Buy and it was like 30 bucks. So we know how limited run stuff goes. Um, we bought a couple copies and this is the extra. I can't decide if we bought it for somebody or not, but uh, for now it's sitting in here. This is another additional copy of Trails Cold Steel. We have a lot of Trails Cold Steel. So this stack here, this whole stack is just extra Vita stuff because we already completed our collection and our complete collection is on the shelf and it varies, right? So let me take some of this big stuff out to show you what I mean. Okay, so just 
pull this stack out really quick. This is all extra Vita games because we picked up a nicer copy or a sealed copy or something else to add to our collection. So we are not doing anything with these for a while. Um, they're already paid for, right? So when we buy a lot of games, we do it with the money we've achieved or we do it with the money that we got from selling the extras, right? So these are all free, basically. These are all games we don't have paid any for, anything for, but we still have them. So right now they're just building value until Vita just keeps climbing and maybe one day we'll sell them, maybe one day we'll trade them for something big, you never know. But that's a lot of Vita games, a lot of extras. Comment below if you've tried to complete a, a collection before and come across the same situation where you have a bunch of extra stuff or duplicate stuff that you just don't know what to do with. Do you guys keep them? Do you put them on the shelf? Do you hide them like we do and come up with them later and forget about them for a couple years? We actually have some non-Vita games up here as well. We've got another, yeah, another Vita game, The Walking Dead. These are actually some of Elisa's gem and the hologram tapes back from when she was a kid. Her grandma used to record them and send them out to her. That was pretty neat. We have a Square Enix store Final Fantasy VII Remake lanyard. Random. We have a green label Final Fantasy VII. Why do we have these? Oh, it's just the cases. <laughs> Is this one case as well? No, oh, that's in there. I wonder if it's missing a disc or something. I don't know. So, yeah, we have extras of these for some reason. Another copy of Trails of Cold Steel in the Lionheart Edition box. Um, oh, blind box from Limited Run. Probably one we already had. This is... Oh, another copy of Picks a Cat. So we do have that game already, so this is our duplicate that we'll probably sell someday. We have... Oh yeah, so these I actually picked up... We picked up these sealed Wii games from Walmart, I believe, right? So Walmart was closing these out for like 10, 15 bucks. So sealed Wii U games went to nothing. I think these are still not worth much sealed, but we have them. Maybe they'll be worth something someday, but yeah. Oh, we have more Walmart clearance fun. So FIFA 18 and Medieval. You guys remember when these were down to like a penny or three cents or something like that? Uh, I think these were a dollar and we bought them at a dollar. I think they still sell for around a dollar, so not a good investment. Uh, I should know better at sports games, but I figured, ah, they're sealed, maybe we can double our money. I don't think so. So these will probably end up as coasters someday. Uh, randomly a sealed copy of NBA Live 2005. That's probably going down in value. <laughs> uh, sealed Twilight Princess. So we already have this game. I think we already have the Greatest Hits Edition, or the Nintendo Selects Edition and the regular edition, but this one's sealed, so sitting in the shelf for no reason. And we got a bunch of sealed Switch games. So these are... This is funny. So this game, Yeez 8, is fantastic, by the way. Highly recommend you play this game. It went away for a while. You couldn't get it, and it became really expensive. Then they did a re-release, so we bought a re-release, and now we just put it away. Maybe it'll be worth something someday. Right now, it's it's whatever. Uh, Land Greaser 1 and 2. 4 Switch, sealed. Sign Mora EX, or Cinemora EX, sealed. Oh man, everybody got on this hype train, right? Remember when they were like, it's only going to be sold for so long. I don't know if this has gone up much in price, but we have an extra one sealed. For whatever reason. Captain Tsubasa, this was a three cent Walmart pickup. We have our copy, this is an extra. Here's some sealed PS Vita games. Uh, Lego Kaima, I think that's actually the wrong seal. Yeah, it's also PAL. But, you know, it's in our Vita stack of things to keep. World of Final Fantasy Day 1 Edition sealed. Hold on to it for no reason at all. Oh, there's a sealed Majora's Mask. Probably not worth a lot now. Maybe it will be. Looks like the, the seal's not in, not in bad condition. Uh, we have Pokemon Ultra Moon. Two of those sealed. So, this was kind of a hunch, right? See these at Walmart, Target for like 
think they were like 30 bucks and we're like yeah let's just buy them put them away and maybe in a couple years it's like pokemon it'll it'll go up in value right oh yeah so one of my favorites so this one look at this classy case we have this in ziploc bag this is a sealed persona 4 golden um we picked this up in a lot that was we were able to resell a couple of the games that were in it and make all our money back that we bought for it. So this is free. Again, no money invested in this whole shelf, basically. And we're probably going to grade this. For us. Not for sale. For us. Just because Persona is a big, a big deal for Elisa. Um, it's an RPG. It's a JRPG on the Vita, so it's important to us. So it's likely something that we're going to grade and put on the shelf as a display piece. Because obviously we already have this. We have the Persona 4 Solid Gold Edition. We're not going to open that one, I don't think. We have an open version of this that we can play. So this is probably the coolest part of the collection. That's probably the most valuable thing we have in here, in my opinion. It's pretty neat. As a reminder, we will be at the Game on Expo beginning of August. So it's going to be here in the Phoenix Convention Center. Make sure you come. If you're anywhere near here and you haven't been to an expo before or haven't been to the Game on Expo, you need to check this out. Uh, Games 31 does a really good job organizing this one, and it is a big deal. It's, in my opinion, one of the best in the country, and I know a lot of big uh, YouTube influencers and all them like to come and hang out and say hey, and big vendors, and it's just, it's incredible. So if you do come and you see us, make sure you say hey. We want to say hey to all y'all and chat about video games and see what you're picking up and share some stories, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a great time. So make sure you come check it out if you get a chance. So hope you guys enjoyed walking through this unseen part of our collection. Do you guys uh, do anything like this? Do you ever box stuff up and keep it way in the back and hope it raises value someday since it's free anyways? But comment below, what do you think we should do with this stuff? Should we let it keep going up in price? Should we just trade it off for something big? We don't know. We're going to sit on it for a little while. So thanks for watching. And remember, the couple that plays together, even with your, when your wife is not feeling well, stays together. Take care. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.